Past few days, I've been talking about the illegal blockade of the ice road leading to the Attawapiskat uh, Diamond Mine. It's actually the De Beers Victor Diamond Mine, 90 kilometers west of Attawapiskat. Well, joining us now on the telephone from Timmins, Ontario, is Tom Ormsby, a spokesman for the mine. Tom, thank you so much for taking the time to join us by telephone. Uh, Ezra, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Well, you're welcome. I understand that you came to terms uh, with the protesters illegally blockading the mine and that they have taken down the blockade. Is that accurate? It's accurate. The, uh, the blockade came down on, um, I guess it was Wednesday evening, started moving Thursday. I'm, I'm kind of losing my timing here, but uh, it, did, it did come down and we've had a couple of uh, convoys move in. I think it was Thursday night. Sorry, I've kind of lost my bearings on time. It's been a, it's been a long week. Yeah, I bet. So you were up there. Were you uh, personally involved in negotiating with the blockade uh, protesters? No, I was scheduled to be uh, at the mine this week, and uh, I was actually up in the, at the mine again last week as well. But we had a local team who went into the community and talked to the, uh, the protesters. Originally, it was just two gentlemen who had uh, some concerns around opportunities for employment and returning to employment at the mine. That's the, really how this uh, originated. So, so two guys, uh, were, there, were they joined by others? Uh, or like, How many people... With, there was always someone on the road, I guess. Uh, what were the total numbers or the largest numbers? Well, our understanding from when our team arrived, there was a total of about, I think, 15 or 16 people. Uh, it was the two gentlemen started at Monday evening. And for safety reasons, we always stop our convoy. We won't move if someone is uh, in the road, even if it's one person, mm -hmm. just strictly for safety reasons. Mm -hmm. and now, that's did, always been our practice. Did you ever ask uh, the police to move these folks? Did you ever make that request or, or did you never put that call in? No, we never made, uh, made such a call. Uh, now, well, why not? Well, because quite often we've learned in our experience that it, usually communication with persons that are involved is, is the most efficient way to, to move forward. And also, you know, there's, um, there's more value and if we can help educate to what the opportunities are to solve the resolution through the processes that are available through the IBA and things like that, it tends to be a longer term solution. So that's always our first uh, and only uh, avenue we've taken so far is let's, let's find out what the issue is and let's see how we can work through it and let's use the protocols that are in place. And, you know, it might take a day or two sometimes, maybe three, but it's usually the best long term way to try to solve it. Uh, I was reading uh, the impact benefit uh, uh, agreement report that you guys issued showing that one of these blockades a few years ago cost the mine more than three and a half million dollars. Can you estimate uh, what economic damage this uh, blockade has done to you this year? Not, not yet. There are, uh, there are fixed costs when we do build the road. So, you know, we have crews hired, there's contracts for them, and so they get standby uh, fees because they're ready to go at any moment. So those costs are the only things at the moment that we would have to start to total. And the whole idea, of course, is if we can successfully complete the program and not add to any cost, like, you know, so hopefully we don't have to fly anything in or, or double up on overtime and stuff like that. So we won't know the, the cost till the program is completely over, but certainly there will be fixed costs of the last few days that will be, you know, certainly a substantial amount of money, but not anywhere near the total you just, uh, you just described from previous times. Now, I, uh, I see uh, an Aboriginal TV uh, station interviewed one of the blockaders, uh, and I'd like to quote from what he said. He said, we talked about reopening the IBA, that's that impact benefit agreement, and discussing some stuff that we are missing in the IBA. The IBA doesn't really benefit our community, and that is the reason why I took the step to be involved in the blockade. That's Bruce Shashish. And finally, he said, De Beers Canada said they put money in for compensation to the band and that the chief and council would pay it, and we never got it. Now, Tom, let me take this in, in order here. The IBA, the Impact Benefit Agreement, that's how De Beers pays money to the Attawapiskat First Nation. This agreement was passed by a vote of band members, more than 85%. Have you cracked open that contract to renegotiate it? based on this blockade? Uh, no, we haven't. The core document is still a very uh, effective and functional document. So that, that's still in place. So that's not what you know, this was about. This is about how do we go through the chapters that are in there and continue to find ways to maximize the benefits that are available through those chapters. So it's things like if there is priority for business, how can we enhance the opportunity for the local businesses to do better when they bid? to give them a better shot at winning the contract. And if there's training, how can we maybe change the training programs that are available so that maybe more people can, can take them or we can find a different way to deliver them so there more people can, can be successful at them. That's what we've been, we've been actually doing that with the community about the IBA since last July. So, you know, what came up this week, we agreed that we would take the new issues and similar issues and add those to this working group that we've had for the last seven months. 
Tommy, you're a very patient man. I can tell you're a bit of a diplomat. You're not a troublemaker and a fighter because, frankly, you've got to live with that Attawapiskat ban and whoever the chief is. They're your neighbors. You can't change that. But it seems to me they're taking advantage. I mean, how many times over the last five, ten years have they blockaded this ice road? I went back through the clippings, and it seems to be like an annual affair. It seems like an annual shakedown. Uh, how many times have they taken a run at you? Well, this is my seventh year uh, with with Victor Mine and, and De Beers Canada, and there's, I think, been only a couple of years where there hasn't been some form of disruption, and it's not always been an Attawapiskat uh, band member, but um, you know, we always find that the, the issues that are brought forward tend to be mostly about, you know, how can we, how can we find a way to improve what we have is, you know, how can I apply for that job or how can I make a business um, contract offer? You know, so they're not, they're not generally big issues and they're, they've never been a collective community issue. It's always been individually driven and that others may participate and bring their individual concerns. But none of them have been like a community initiative to go out and do this. Now, I, I want to ask you one last question. I know we're almost out of time. Uh, we were flashing on the screen some uh, elements from your IBA report, and I refer to the quote uh, from that Mr. Shashi saying, some payments made by De Beers to the band haven't been seen by band members. Do you know anything about that? You make a quarterly payment uh, to the band. Uh, you call it a royalty, even though it's... Uh, not to the Queen, of course. Do you know how that money is dispersed at all within the band? No. The agreement has various ways to compensate. Some is direct financial payment. Others would be indirect, like the, you know, the priority for jobs and businesses. So when it comes to any direct financial compensation, the way the agreement was negotiated and structured, that our contribution goes into a community um, account, that the community sets up, such as their trust account, and that's their responsibility. Our, our job is under the agreement to make sure those are paid on time, and then those will then move as the community sees accordingly. Yeah. And, they, and those payments are for various things. For example, compensation of building the mine on the road, on, the, on their traditional land, rather, or someone who may have a trap line in the area. The community is then responsible for that distribution as they see fit. Uh, we, we are not involved in the governance of those, of those distributions. Tom, I tell you, I wish you were. I think you love this Indian band and take better care of it than the chief does. I appreciate you being in touch with us by phone. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Hey.